This episode has been brought to you by the Raw Raw Spirit Team. Building a business can be overwhelming, but it doesn't have to be. We teach small and medium-sized businesses strategies for building a profitable, successful, stress-free business and life. Because guess what? You are more than your business. Through one-on-one -on -one training, online courses, and monthly guest experts, the Spirit Team is built on the principle of building each other up in business and in spirit. Try it for 14 days for free. Just head to rawrawconsulting.com and check out the Raw Raw Spirit Team. Hey, it's Lauren and welcome to the Raw Raw Podcast. On the show today, I spoke with Pauline Pollard. She's a child self-esteem coach and uh, we had a really interesting conversation about emotions and feeling your feelings. During our time together, we talked a lot about you know, the importance of processing your emotions, the importance of working through things as they happen instead of years and years later, and also how this kind of process and some of the tips and tricks and techniques that she gave in the talk can really help your child to do the same thing. We also talked a lot about how uh, when a parent is happy and taking time for themselves, that is reflected in the happiness of the child. So it was a really interesting discussion. Clearly Pauline is really passionate about the work that she does and she's had a lot of success, which continues to drive her. I really enjoyed talking to her and I hope you'll get a lot out of this conversation. Thanks for listening. Hi, I'm Lauren, and welcome to the show. My guest today is Pauline Pollard, who is a child self-esteem coach, and her mission is to assist children to get in touch with their passions and purpose in life. Originally trained as a registered nurse and accredited diabetes instructor, Pauline is also a certified child self-esteem coach, and she studied Reiki, emotional freedom technique, also known as EFT, energy medicine and the chakras, as well as practicing yoga and meditation for over 20 years. The techniques Pauline uses with children ignites powerful transformation and healing from anxiety and brings your child back into alignment with feelings of confidence, self-assuredness, and helps them become more passionate about their lives. She currently offers live workshops and online programs that will transform your child's life from feeling stuck in overwhelm, self-doubt, and anxiety to becoming happy, confident, and self-assured. Hi, Pauline. Thank you so Hello, much for being Lauren. on the show. Today, we're going to be talking about managing your emotions and not being afraid to feel your feelings. So first of all, looking at your bio, wow, you've got some pretty amazing work that you're already doing. Yes. It must be very satisfying and fulfilling to see some of the changes you've been able to, um, you know, to help facilitate in children. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And the wonderful thing, Lauren, working with children, especially now, um, I have worked with primary school children, but predominantly now it's teenagers. Um, and teenage girls seem to be you know, attracted to the work that I do mm -hmm. and um, seeing how quickly they transform when they're consistently doing the techniques that I show them and um, the work that they do, um, watching those transformations is incredible. And also seeing, because I work closely with the, with the children, but also the mums are generally there as well in most of the sessions that I do. And so the mums are just like, wow, you know, I can't believe that this has happened so quickly. And um, the kids just go from, yeah, I think with the energy work, they um, embrace it. Um, and, you know, working with energy with children, things happen very quickly, which is really exciting. It is really exciting. I do want to talk to you later on in the show a little bit about some success stories that you've seen and also kind of understanding a bit more because I know you've processed or transformed slightly to work with parents and children, not just children. So let's talk about that in a few minutes. But before yeah. we get into all that, and I know we've got a huge topic ahead of us to talk about emotions and feeling our emotions, do we actually have to? Uh, I would first of all like to go way, 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 maybe not that far back, but 
back enough to find out how you first got involved in becoming a child self-esteem coach. And, you know, was that because you had your own children or were you already sort of involved in that world beforehand? Ah, that's a great question. I guess it's it starts with my nursing background. Um, and then when I became a diabetes educator, I was working closely with parents and children in that um, context. And so I would see um, children that are coming to me with a chronic disease, diabetes, um, and at such a young age and working with them and working with the anxiety and the stress and the overwhelm that that creates for both the child and the parent. So I was working closely in that sort of facility. And, um, but, and that was also what, um, I guess, then having my own children and seeing what was going on for them. And then at seven years of age, my son, um, who's my eldest child now, he's now 16, at seven years of age, he was bullied at school. And it wasn't, it was a, a physical as well as verbal abuse. And at that time, I was going through a really difficult time in my own life. And so seeing that impact on my son, I was like, I've got to do something. I've got to do something for myself to be the mum that I wish to be to help him through what he's going through. Because um, even though I'd done a lot of um, work, as in, you know, Wayne Dyer, Marianne Williamson, Deepak Chopra, I knew about different ways of thinking, but I wasn't actually implementing it in my life at that time. So it was like, I really need to do something for myself in order to facilitate that change and that transformation for my son. And so that's when I went on this a bigger and more intense journey to um, learn the different techniques and skills that I now have in order to help my kids. Um, initially, it was just to help my children and myself. And then it was like um, parents were seeing the way that my children were at school um, and how I was working with them. And they're like, ah, oh, you know, can we, you know, just catch up for a coffee because I'm having issues with my son or my daughter. And that's really how it pretty much flourished from there. The business just, yeah, took over. Oh. And, yeah. <laughs> I love that because, you know, often you know, people, I think, you know, people who are, who become speakers and who become teachers and, you know, who really want to share their, um, you know, the things that they've learned in their life have, have overcome adversity. And so that's why they know that it works. And that's why sometimes, you know, someone like myself, for example, I've been able to overcome a lot through uh, learning to control my mind or work at it every day. And, you know, yeah. to the point where sometimes I just want to tell everyone, yeah, but you can control your mind, you can control your thoughts ad nauseum. And, it, you know, I think sometimes it has the adverse effect in a way, because I just know that this works so well for me, that I really want to share it with the world. And I think that, you know, some yeah. of the work that you're doing, I'm so inspired to, to learn about it and to give you a platform to talk about it because I don't believe that we spend enough time, you know, educating children on their ability to turn things around. And then when we're not, you know, kind of taking advantage of how, you know, flexible they are and how open-minded they are at that age, you know, it actually has an awful effect because then we end up trying to undo a lot of patterns in adults. <laughs> so, yes. so it's so yes. important, I think, to, you know, be able to target, you know, children and to be able to teach them these skills. And it's funny that, you know, you were interested in learning a lot about, you know, the teachings of some of these profound teachers, but you know, it's, it's what you were talking about before. It's not until you're actually implementing the stuff, but the cool thing yeah. about that is that because you were open to it and listening to it and learning from it, you had the foundation to know where you were supposed to almost jump off of. So have you been able yes. to, yeah, to take a lot of the teachings that you've learned and kind of create your own take on them or that's exactly, yeah. that's exactly right. I feel from my experience that 
you can read a lot of books, you can do a lot of courses, and you can have a lot of aha moments while you're reading them. I mean, how often, I'm a highlighter girl, so <laughs> I'll get out the book and, you know, Me certain too. phrases. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And there'll be certain phrases, I'm like, oh my goodness, that so resonates with me. And I'm highlighting and highlighting. But that's awesome to have the aha moments because it's showing that you're aware and you're ready for that next step, that next level. But if you don't start actually making changes in your lifestyle, you're not going to get the changes that you're desiring. You're going to keep, if you keep continu continuing to do the same as what you're doing, you know, like once the book is closed and put down, you're like, that was awesome, you know, that really, really resonated with me. And then you keep going on and doing repeating patterns, then you're going to get the same things going on repeat in your day yeah. and that's where yeah. I found that with a lot of these um, energy techniques like the energy medicine and emotional freedom technique in particular those techniques that I've incorporated and actually implemented in my life and made a conscious decision that I was going to do these techniques consistently because what I found is that when you are wanting to make changes in your life you can see things aren't going the way that you want to make want them to go and in the direction you want them to go in unless you make a conscious effort to to make consistent change and do these things on a consistent basis it's not going to happen for you you've really got to be committed you've really got to be ready yep i'm drawing the line in the sand that is it i am making this commitment to do these things because what happens is you've got to retrain your body and rewire your body from what it's used to doing to a new way of being and doing okay so even though it's like when i work with with children that are suffering a lot from anxiety their body systems will go out of balance when you're suffering from anxiety and stress and there's three particular systems that actually go out of balance. And if you don't get them back into balance, but in order to do that, you need to do these consistent techniques, energy techniques to rewire the body back to what is a normal state of being. It's actually adopted being out of balance as being that normal state. So being in fight and flight on a regular basis, um, and that is the normal so we need to retrain the body to incorporate and rebalance itself again. And so in order to do that, you need to be consistent with the techniques. And a really good example, I, remember, I know that you mentioned about bringing in case studies, but a really good example was when I was working with a little girl, I'd never worked with, her, with anyone who had um, dyslexia before. And this particular girl had dyslexia and her mum had come to me, she had dyslexia and um, ADHD. And when she, when she presented to me, um, I did a little bit of testing with her and I could see that her energy wasn't crossing over. That is one of the key things when um, you're in fight and flight, that the energy doesn't cross over in the body. So you want the left hemisphere of the brain needs to cross over and coordinate uh, and facilitate the right side of the body and the right hemisphere of the brain does the left side of the body. When I tested this little girl, the energy was not crossing over at all. And when I implemented different techniques to help cross over the energy, she found them really difficult. Now, these techniques are very simple to do, but if your body's not used to it, she was really uncoordinated with it. And so it was like really um, working with that energy on a consistent basis over a period of time. Um, and at the end of the the course of a um, couple of sessions with her, it was amazing the transformation in um, her ability with working um, at school and as well as being able to self-regulate her emotions. Like her teacher was just saying, this is amazing. This little girl would have tantrums in the middle of the classroom. Um, and now she can know when she's feeling triggered and actually says, I need to just walk away does a few energy techniques and then comes back into the classroom ready to focus and concentrate and get going with her work again. And that was just like, it brings tears to my eyes when I talk about it because that is, um, that's really empowering someone to be in control of their own 
choices and what they they can do in their own body, which is really important. And controlling, you know, you're giving her the tools to be able to control her destiny technically, because now it's not about, you know, it sounds to me that, you know, you're providing people with an opportunity to take responsibility and control. And I think that, you know, we aren't taught that enough. And, uh, you know, I remember when I watched, I don't know if you saw this movie, came out in the late 90s, early 2000s, but What the Bleep Do We Know? Did you ever watch that movie? Um, I've heard of it. Okay, I'm going to put a link for it in the show notes and I'll send you a link for it as well, Pauline. But it was the most amazing movie. It changed my whole life because it was the first time that I saw and understood the process a bit about neural nets and, you know, busting down, you know, our, our neural nets and creating new ones, you know, things like that in our mind. And I understood that I was able to sort of reprogram what was going on in a way that I had never been taught before. I think that, you know, going back to what you were talking about before is that often we do believe that our normal state of mind is this one of, imbalance is this one of feeling and working through anxiety on a regular basis and you know if you've been like that for a long time you you don't really know that there is another world that you know you could be living in and you know it's great to see some of these you know things that you're being able to do with children but what i know that uh, you told me about when we caught up in our pre-interview was a lot about the kind of work that you've been able to do with parents because mm -hmm. i'm under the impression that you know a lot of the the talks i've been doing with a lot of people on this program have really been showing me that a lot of behavior is in fact learned and so if we're learning how to be from our parents you know it would kind of seem as though you know, you could teach people how to do something or children how to do something, but they're really kind of learning from their parents. So would you say that, you know, can you talk to me a little bit about the transformation you went with working with parents more actively and your reason for that? Yeah, yeah. So what I was finding was um, when I was working with the teenage girls, and so a lot of them they may have been high achievers in what they were doing, but really the underlying um, self-esteem and confidence issues were, were quite obvious in the way that they were exhibiting their behaviour. And when I work with these teen girls, most of the time the mums will be in the calls as well because I want the mums to see how I'm working with them and the techniques that I'm giving them um, and for them to also ask questions as well because at the end of the day, what happens is the techniques that I show, all of the mums are like, ah, I'm going to use this on myself. And that's my intention is for them to take it on board as well. But what I was really finding was that what the issues that were going on for the daughter were absolutely mirror issues that were going on for the mother as well. The mother would be contributing and saying, yeah, you know, as a teen, I, I had really low self-esteem. And even now I struggle with... Um, you know, standing up for myself or standing in my own power and doing these things. And I was just like, my goodness, this is so important that the mothers are addressed as well because so often we sacrifice as mothers, we sacrifice ourselves and do so much for our children and put our own lives on hold in a sense um, for that future time when our children may not need us as much. But I'm saying, no. In order to serve your children, you need to back yourself first. You need to care for yourself first and foremost. Because I know from my, um, my background as well as a, a fabulous example, where I'm one of, five, uh, one of six children, sorry, I was going to say five children, one of one, um, the middle daughter of like, I've got two older sisters, two younger sisters and an older brother. So it was a big family. And I always saw my mum giving, giving, giving to us, but never giving to herself. And so she always sacrificed for us, you know, for her children, which is beautiful. But I've only got two children and I started to see that replaying in my life where I was like, you know, putting my life on hold for my kids. And when you do that, to be honest with you, you become resentful and you start playing the victim and the martyr. And that was something that was really confronting for me to look at that and go, 
oh my goodness, this is, I'm, I'm replaying what my mum was doing with her children and it's just coming through that generational line and I'm starting to do that now and I would feel guilty for feeling resentful and frustrated and um, all of those sort of things, but then I would, could literally have these out-of-body experiences in a sense where I was saying, you know, that's okay, I'll do the dishes, I'll do this, I'll do that, you know, like the martyr and all this sort of thing. It's like, this is not on. And I had this awareness around, it was like, no, I need to, you know, shake myself out of this for my, my children's um, benefit, but for my benefit as well. And so by working with this, um, I found that my life has become so much lighter and easier and flowing so much easier. Um, I also had this belief that in order to transform my life, it would have to be hard work and it would have to be these amazing big things that I would have to do, these huge big changes. And let me just tell because parent, you know, mums are like, we're busy, you know, I can't just fit in another thing into my life. Um, from my perspective is that they don't need to be these birth shattering, huge, big changes that you have to implement into your life. What you want to do is integrate what your, what these techniques into your existing routines. And what you'll find is that you will actually feel so much more uplifted and inspired. And when you're in that uplifted, inspired state, then things open up for you. Time becomes more expansive. Um, opportunities will come to you. Circumstances and resources will come to you. People will come to you that will support you in whatever it is that you're doing. And that is that beautiful thing of the energy that you're creating within you is um, attracting back to you that same energy. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And so when you're talking, when we're talking about emotions, like we haven't even touched on that topic yeah. yet. We'll Laura, go there. But <laughs> if, yeah. If you're happy for me just to, to, I do just want to comment first, um, but I don't want you to lose your train of thought, but mm. I, I do want mm. to echo what you were talking about, which it sounds to me like flow. And I know that in a few minutes, we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, allowing our emotions to really flow because when we don't, where do they go? Do they stay stuck inside, you know? And, you know, just to echo what you were talking about before as well, you know, I did learn from a, a talk I heard Wayne Dyer give where he was, I think he was actually just answering a caller on his radio show. And he was making the point of saying to them, it's all about the direction that you're facing. So it's all yeah. about where you're going and the small, you know, steps that you're taking to get there. And, you know, when you were talking about people utilizing the techniques that you're teaching them, and we'll go over at the end of the call, you know, um, whether or not you've got a couple suggestions on that. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's all about implementing these things one step at a time, which is taking you where you want to be, as opposed yeah. to, yeah. And I, I do want to know as well, you know, you, I, I'm not, a, I'm not a parent, so it's difficult for me to be able to connect to you on this level. But at the same time, I do know a lot of parents and I do have nieces and nephews and the like, and I'm just wondering, you know, you having this realization that you need to put yourself first, you need to prioritize your own happiness, you need to have your own, you know, things that you're doing as well to really fill up your own tank and you'll be allowed to give to others. I mean, are these conversations that you're having with other mothers and fathers or are these conversations? So how are those sort of conversations being received? And, you know, are you giving other people these aha moments? Because it sounds to me that when you're putting yourself second, that's when things don't flow. And that's when you're talking about expansive time and all these things working out for you is because, you know, you've made peace a priority. Yeah, with um, so with the the mothers that I'm seeing at the moment. So, um, you know, I tend to only take a few clients at a time um, because I like to, even though I have like a step-by-step -step process because I like to build the foundations first and then build on those foundations when I first um, start working with someone, 
um, it becomes um, very individualised and very unique for that person. But with the, the, the mums, what I'm first starting with is what's important to you. And a lot of the time, Lauren, I'll have mums sort of like, oh, I'm not really sure, you know, like I just want to have more time or I just want, it's like, come on, dig deeper. So I'll spend a lot of time in the beginning with, with the mums in um, sort of techniques that will help to draw out what is really important to them and, and delve in deeper to what their soul is yearning for. A lot of the time, it may be just to know what they don't want. What it, at the moment in your life is really causing you frustration and um, upset and overwhelm. And once they get going with that, then it's like, okay, so this is what you don't want. What is it that you do desire? And to, to start heading that way. And once they've got the foundations of some inklings of what it is that they desire, then it's like just teaching them that um, the steps that why they haven't got what they've got, what they want now, what, what's blocking them. And most of the time it's um, in regards to emotions, it's that stuck energy in their body. Um, anxiety and stress is a fabulous way of stopping and blocking you from, you know, going for your desires or even knowing what it is that you truly desire and, mm -hmm. and in your life and these desires can be anything from wanting to start your own business like get out of the job that you're doing and wanting to start your own business it could be in relationships with um, your partner with your children so and friendships as well incorporate that it could be your health and fitness it might be something around that that you're not happy with in regards to your health um, the food that you're eating, whatever it might be, it doesn't matter what it is. You use the same process. I use the same processes and have to in order for people to to actually start to feel invigorated about um, making transformations in their life that are really positive. It's getting in touch with knowing that okay, so this is the desire that I want, okay. Um, and getting in touch with those feelings of what that desire is going to bring to them. Because ultimately, whether it's I want a new house, you know, like a physical thing that you want, a manifestation, you want to manifest a new car, a new house, that's fine. It's so long as that you're not attaching your worth to those things, mm. first and foremost, your worthiness to those things. But secondly, it's like you're desiring these things because you want to feel an emotion, you want to feel something about yourself. And so what is it that wanting or to have that house by the beach, what emotions will that bring when you are actually there? Um, does, it, does it make you want to feel like you've got so much freedom, you've got security, you've got stability, you know, will it bring you happiness, joy, and focusing on those values and those, those emotions? And then looking at your life right now and saying, what is it that I can do right now that will give me freedom, that feeling of freedom? What can I do right now that will help me to feel that happiness, that joy? And for me, it was actually looking at my daughter. My 13-year-old daughter has been such an amazing teacher for me. She's just like, mum just do what makes you happy, you know? So we actually um, started doing hula hoop classes together and I was a shock. I couldn't, you know, coordinate myself properly, but it was so much fun. And it may be things as simple as, yeah, you've got to cook dinner, but how about put some, you know, music on while you're cooking dinner to raise your vibration to feeling happy about yourself. Um, so, yeah, there's different ways that we can start to start feeling those emotions now in our present day that will bring us more clarity um, and to know the next step to take because another thing that can be real um, block is that people will think, okay, this is what I want to do, this is the career that I want to go towards or the job that I want, but I don't know how I'm going to get there. The how can be... Um, the hardest thing that will stop someone from doing anything because you think 
oh my goodness, I've got to do this and then I've got to do this and this and this. And it just seems so overwhelming. And you just say, I don't think I can do that. You've got to let go of the how. And so in order to do that, you need to trust. Trust in yourself and trust in the universe, God, goddess, all that is, whatever you like to call it, that higher universal energy source and know that when you're tapped in to your soul desires and soul goals, that it will flow through you, that energy will flow through you and you will be presented with the next step, that next inspired action to take. And that's all you need to do is just take that next step, that one next step that will then open up the possibilities and the opportunities for you to then take the next step and and the path opens. So I, I was thinking there while you were talking, well, I have one quick question. Uh, when you're doing these sessions with the parents, is the teenager in the room as well? And are you, are they being able to see, you know, that, you know, the, the mother working through the mother, you know, processing their own desires? Do they see that? No, no. With these sessions, these are just done with the mum. But when I'm speaking, a lot of the time when I'm talking with the mums, it will be um, all the techniques basically that I give the teenage girls, that I give the mums, it's interlinked. Everyone can use them. As, and even for mums that have like um, little babies, little children, little toddlers, these techniques, for you to um, start implementing the techniques that I give, it really helps to change your perception of what's going on in your reality. So um, an example would be you would start seeing the behaviour of your child not as a um, something to, you know, that they're having a go at you or, you know, that it's all about you. You can actually look at what's going on with your child and see their behaviour as um, something a lot deeper, seeing that they do have... Um, beliefs about themselves and that's why they're acting out with the behavior and that you can then support them and know how to support them um, which is really really important and it actually will help the child a lot I had a mum whose son would um, when she'd go to pick him up from school he was nine years old at the time and when she would go and pick him up from school he would come out of school throw his school bag at her and walk off and that was where he was at at that time and um, there would be times where he'd be really upset at home and be really angry and frustrated and you know I said to her when he's having those moments and you go up to him and say you know Josh are you okay and he says no mum go away I said respect that give him his space but don't actually leave the room stay in the room so he can see that you're still there because more often than not, what he's trying to do is control the situation. So give him a little bit of control, but step away, but stay in the room because he doesn't want you to leave ultimately. And to just be there and be present for him while he's going through these emotions and what's going on for him and just say, when you're ready, I'm here for you. When you're ready, I will sit and you can tell me what it is that I need to do to support you. And just keep reiterating that. And if you want me to keep going with emotions, because emotions are energy. They are energy and they need to flow. And so what happens is that we have been brought up to see emotions as good and bad. We've been brought up to see, oh, you know, that's great when my child is feeling happy, you know, joy, gratitude, all of those high vibrational emotions. That's awesome. But when they're feeling sadness or overwhelm or frustration or anger, that's not good. Um, because a lot of the times what will happen is that you'll see your child feeling angry and then they act out and they might hit or punch or pinch someone. And you see that behaviour, and don't get me wrong, that behaviour is not appropriate. But if you look at the anger, a lot of the time the mistake that people make is they look at the anger and go, oh, my goodness, it's the anger that's making them act out like this. So, you know, we need to, you know, get rid of it and shove it down. You shouldn't be feeling this emotion. You shouldn't be feeling this anger. 
and try to move on from that and, and you know, not address that. But, and what happens is when you push that emotion down, it doesn't leave the body. It's not able to be processed in the moment because it's really important that we process our emo emotions in the moment. And so what happens is there's actually an, a belief in the moment that is attached into a subconscious mind as well. So you have a belief that you're not good enough and you have a trigger in your external environment where someone says, oh, no, you can't do that. And if you believe that you're not good enough and that you can't do that, it may create that emotion of anger where you feel really angry and then lash out. And this will be a repeat pattern until you actually deal with that emotion that is stuck in your energy system. That's why we see um, behaviours repeat and repeat and repeat because you haven't addressed with that emotional charge that is still still active in your past. Um, and in order to deal with that, you need to actually um, work with that emotion and release it and allow it to flow. And that's where techniques like emotional freedom technique are really good for looking at those sort of situation, helping to release that emotion um, and create more empowering beliefs. So the beliefs are able to be shifted and changed as well. So at a deeper root level, the belief has changed. Therefore, the emotion will change and therefore the action and behavior will be different as well. So that's how emotional freedom technique works. But if you're dealing with a child who... Sorry, I'm going to cut um, you off because just for our yeah. listener at home who isn't aware of emotional freedom technique, EFT, mm. can you just echo, is that when you touch on some of the energy centers and you yes. know you kind of do like a bit of a tapping thing? Could you explain the actual yeah. physical technique for a minute? Yeah, yeah. So... Emotional freedom technique is all about um, basically physically tapping with your hands. It's like um, it's it's based on acupuncture, which is like from five thousand years ago that the um, acupoints on our body. So they relate to the meridians, which are the flow, the energy channels in our body. So if you can think about your circulatory system, you have your arteries and veins that carry the blood through your body. We also have an energy system, which are called, so the equivalent of our arteries and veins are called the meridians. And these meridians carry our energy throughout our body. And what happens when um, our emotions are energy, and if we don't process our emotions in the moment of a situation happening, an event happening, those emotions get suppressed and actually get stuck in our energy system, just like we can have blood clots in our um, arteries that block the flow of the blood. This will block the flow of the energy. And you can literally feel um, some physical pain as well when our energy is actually blocked. Um, you can feel pain in your body. And a lot of the time that pain is the energy that is stuck. Pain is basically energy that's not flowing and it's stuck in our body. And so what emotion freedom technique does is it's tapping on those end, point of, end points of those meridians on different parts of our body. And the beauty is that you don't have to stick needles into yourself. It's just a matter of tapping. And it has so much flexibility around how you can use it. Because if I'm working with a, with a, a client who has um, working on releasing a belief system and emotions from the past, then we work, work through and while we're tapping, we're talking about how we're feeling, where we're feeling it in our body. Generally, in the chest can be heavy when you're feeling an emotional charge or in the throat or a lot of children that are suffering from low self-esteem and confidence, they'll feel it in their gut. They'll have upset stomach issues a lot of the time as well. And so we'll tap through those things and then we were able to then transform that and tap through the positive things, what you want to have happen. Um, that's how you can release the old emotions. 
but also in the present moment you can use tapping to feel really uplifted and inspired before you walk out the door to school i would do this with my daughter in the car we'd just tap on these meridian points because what it's also doing is calming our nervous system down it's also sending signals to our brain that it's safe it's you're okay you're in a calm space so that's real you know amazing stuff um, that you can use to help with anxiety and overwhelm you and I will, <laughs> I will say to our, um, yeah, our listener at home that when Pauline was talking to me there, she was taking her two fingers and she was tapping her third eye area, which is the area between our two eyebrows, as well as the side, which is around her temple. And then she was also touching at one point, um, the eye socket sort of under the eye. Yeah. So just for yeah. our listener at home who can't see what you're doing, I wanted to make the make that known that those are some ways that you can energize yourself if you are looking to do that. Um, yeah. yeah, and the beautiful thing, Lauren, is that um, because I've also done energy medicine technique with another teacher and I, did, I, I have done the emotional freedom technique, both of these intertwine together. So when, I'm, when you're tapping on, like, um, like you were saying, the third eye, the side of the eye, under the eye on your cheekbone, you do under the nose, under your lip, on your collarbone, under your arm, top of the head and side of the hand. All of those tapping points are actually related to the systems. Remember I mentioned that sometimes with anxiety, systems in our body get out of balance. Mm -hmm. These also help to rebalance those systems in our body. So there's so many flow-on effects of these techniques, these energy techniques that intertwine together in order to um, work on your body in a holistic way, which is mm. beautiful. Yes, it's very cool. So what part does the mind play in relation to our emotions? I mean, I know you oh, were talking yes. a bit about how when we don't process an emotion, it stays stuck within us. But you know, whenever I've had anxiety, I can pretty much always trace it back to a thought. So do yes. our emotions come primarily from a thought we're having? And what role does that play? And how can we overcome that? Yeah, you've given me goosebumps. Okay, so basically, what happens is we have a belief about ourselves, which is in our subconscious mind. Okay, so consciously, we don't know what these beliefs are. But you, you find out, and how I see where the beliefs are is in our behaviour, which is the end result. So you have a subconscious belief about yourself. And whatever that belief is, is created as a thought. Okay. And so when you're thinking about things, then it creates your thoughts, create your emotions. And your emotions, whatever your emotion is, you will act on what that is. So, for example, if you have a thought about yourself that um, maybe maybe you've played tennis, you used to play tennis, and every time you did um, a backhand, you are really good with your forehand, but the backhand was just really bad. And you kept on, oh, I'm terrible at backhand, I'm just no good. And your coach kept saying, your backhand is really bad, you really need to work on it. And you've taken on board in your subconscious mind as a belief that my backhand is always really bad, okay? So when you're playing tennis, you'll hit the ball, try and do a backhand, it goes into the net, you have that thought of, yep, see, I always hit my backhand into the net. Then you have the emotion of feeling less than, feeling not good enough. And your actions might be to smack your racket on the ground, like in the day when John McEnroe used to do that, smack your back racket on the ground or throw it across. Now, so that, in a sense, just gives you a little bit of an idea of how I believe. So when it comes to self-esteem and confidence, that is really key when I'm working with girls who even though they were high achievers, even though they would get like 97% in their, in their grades, their focus wouldn't be on the 97%. Their focus would be on the 3% that they didn't get right. And it was just amazing how that 
they would just feel not good enough because of not getting that 100%. And you know what? Even if they did get 100%, they'd still be like, oh, my God, I've got 100%. I, I have to live up to this expectation now. There would always be something that they would find by their thoughts, by their beliefs, which, which create their thoughts. There would be something that they would find that they would then be like how to bring themselves down again. So self-esteem and confidence is not necessarily just children that um, aren't achieving. It's high achievers as well. It doesn't discriminate. Um, so working with the energy of, um, you know, you don't even have to know why it happened, but just working with that energy and knowing, you can see it in people's behaviour, what their beliefs are. But it's even more transformational when they can actually then pick it up themselves and say, mm. oh, my goodness, so this is what's been going on. So for me, I can highlight, I sort of bring people to that realisation themselves of what's going on for them, if that makes sense, so that they can own it and then want to work, work with it. Do you think a lot of people uh, aren't aware that they're not processing their emotions? Yeah. Or that they're stopping them from fully, you know, yeah, becoming yeah. realized. Yeah, yeah, I do. I do. And because it's amazing, like, um, you know, this podcast is going to be really enlightening for a lot of people because they're, they'll be wanting to know more. They're at that stage where it's like, I want to know more. I can see these patterns happening in my life, but I'm not really sure why and how. And so by listening to this, it's like, ah, oh, so that's what's going on. And it then motivates people to want to um, make changes because so many people think that it's just me. It's just the way that life is. It's just the way things are. And they're constantly reacting to their external environment and wondering why they're always putting out spot fires and having to, you know, when you actually work from within, which is what I was talking about before this flow, when you can actually like go, I'm not looking at the exter my external reality right now because that has been created by my past. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll say that again. Your yeah, external say that again. Reality, That's good. <laughs> your external reality, what's going on for you right now in this moment, has been created by your thoughts, your beliefs, and your emotions of your past. Now, there's a little bit of a lag time. And what lag time means is that in this present moment, when you can start working with releasing your emotions and your energy, um, and getting your energy into alignment, then it's creating a new future for you. So then you will see your reality starting to change and transform in your future as you go forward. So that is the key thing about having to look at our emotions and, and, and um, working with our emotions and honouring our emotions in the present moment in order to ch make change happen for mm -hmm. us. And that goes back to what we were talking about at the beginning of, of the conversation, which was originally, you know, taking responsibility for where you are. So I know you were talking uh, about, you know, sorry, I'm kind of going back again just for a minute, but uh, about mothers and you were sort of giving some techniques on, you know, figuring out when a, when somebody at home is listening and thinking, I don't know what I want. Uh, you were sort of suggesting talking about what you don't want. And then, you know, once you know what you don't want, then you can start focusing on small little things that you do want. Now for, you know, for, for children at home and for, for parents who, who might be listening to this, you know, are there other suggestions that you have for, you know, kind of ways of, of building yourself up and, you know, because somebody at home might be listening to this and thinking, well, I don't like where I am right now. I'm hearing that you're telling me that it's because of the thoughts that I've thought have created these emotions, which have created my, you know, current situation, but I don't like where I am. You know, you have mentioned a bit about EFT, but do you have some other, you know, tips that people might want to, you know, or are able to try at home in the meantime to kind of help, 
help them. Yeah, yeah. So if we go back to the emotion side of things and a couple of techniques that you can use for yourself and for your children as well, goes hand in hand. And that is if you're feeling an emotion in the moment, so say I'll, I'll take it from the perspective of a mum and a child, okay, and how you can support your child when they're going through big emotions in the moment. So, and then you can relate it back to yourself as well. And that is when you're feeling, when you can see that your child is feeling a really intense emotion of frustration, overwhelm, anger, whatever it might be, the first thing to do is to actually acknowledge that emotion with the child rather than say, oh, you'll be fine, you'll get over it, you know, which is something that we tend to do because we feel uncomfortable actually seeing them uncomfortable with their emotions. We feel uncomfortable when they're uncomfortable. So what you want to do is actually acknowledge the emotion and say, you know, Jack, I can see that you're feeling angry, frustrated, overwhelmed. Does that, does that feel right? And they may agree with you or they might be, I don't know what I'm feeling. It just doesn't feel good, okay? Now, what's going on is when um, you're feeling one of these lower energy emotions like frustration, overwhelm, anger, it's a very heavy, dense emotion and it actually vibrates at a very slow vibration and a dense and heavy, murky vibration. So in the body, you can feel that as a very heavy, dense feeling. And a lot of the time you can sort of just guide the kids, where, where are you feeling it in your body? You want to get them back connected within their body, not to what was going on, on outside of themselves that created them to get angry. Right. So it's letting this story go that, you know, Jack was hit by his younger brother or whatever it might be that created him, made him feel angry. We want to get them to go tap inside themselves rather than think about that story because the story is what creates the belief and yeah. all of the things that I've spoken yeah. about. We want to let go of the story and for him to actually feel into himself that emotion. What's and the story on. is when you can actually grow. So not only yes. did, did Jack's brother hit him, but Jack's brother hit him because he hates him and he hates him because this one time he <laughs> took his truck and then... <laughs> Perfect, but we do Lauren, that perfect. all the time. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And that's where our ego and mind will take over yeah. and it spirals. So we want to get our children in touch with what's going on within their body and where they're feeling it. So if they can sort of close their eyes and feel into where they're feeling it in their body, oh, mummy, it feels, I can feel it in my chest, I can't, or you can see that they can't take a deep breath in. I can see, Jack, that you can't take a deep breath in. I'm feeling it in my throat, my chest, my shoulders, I feel heavy, um, whatever it might be. Then you can do this process with your child. There's two techniques I want to show you, I want to talk to you through today. So the first one is about colour and vibration. So while they're getting in touch with their body and where they're feeling this heaviness, you want to ask them, what colour does this heaviness feel? Generally, they'll say it's a dark green, it's a black, it's a yucky muddy color a gray if they don't know just guide them just say what do you think if you knew what do you think the color would be um and where are you seeing that and feeling it in your body oh i'm feeling this dark murky color and it's in my chest and you say okay so where would you feel happiness in your body you know and my daughter literally did this to me when i was doing it with her. she goes i can't feel happiness in my body can't see it I said, but if you could, where do you think that happiness would be? She said, oh, um, in my little finger. And I said, okay, that's different. In your little finger. And I said, and what colour would it be? She said, um, it's a yellow, but it's a really, really tiny yellow, mum. I can feel that heaviness in my chest. And I said, that's okay, sweetheart. I said, we want to breathe now. And so getting children to do the deep breathing is so, so key because a deep breath actually stimulates receptors at the bottom of our lungs, which are connected with our nervous system, our parasympathetic nervous system, which is the calming nervous mm. system. So it's stimulating that calming nervous system, okay? So taking that deep breath in and allowing it to flow out. And so every time you take that deep breath in, that yellow is getting brighter in a little finger and it's flowing through your body. And you, then you just guide them 
the yellow is getting brighter. Where can you see it? Is it flowing up your arms? Is it flowing towards your chest? They're going, yes, yes, yes. And then once it gets to the chest, what's happening now? The yellow is taking over that dark colour, that murky colour, and they start to feel that happiness through their body. It is an incredible, it sounds so simple, but it is incredible. And we can do that ourselves as adults very quickly. Where is the happiness in our body and where am I feeling it and how can I bring it in? The other thing that you can do with your child I just want to cut you off before we go on to the next point because I love that because I, I, I can say that it's all about the present moment. I, I just want to echo what you were talking about because this is your moment of control and when you get self-aware that, oh, I'm feeling an emotion or there's a thought happening or whatever, I'm telling this, this story to myself, you're basically saying, take a moment, stop and transform it into something else. And I think it's, you know, it's really indicative that if you're not taking a moment to just allow it to be, you know, focusing on that color, I've never heard that way. That is so cool. I'm going to try that myself. Thank you. Um, You know, when you take that moment to really process it, then that's what you're talking about, right? It's letting those emotions go and then they're not getting stored up inside you. And you know, echoing what you were talking about before is that, you know, when you take control of where you are in the moment now, you're creating a different reality for yourself, one flowing and bliss and, you know, where things are a lot more relaxed and peaceful. So I know you're going to give us another technique now. I just really wanted to echo that that was, you know, being in the moment and taking control now is actually is exactly what we've been talking about or what you've been talking about, allowing it to go by processing it right now not waiting. Absolutely, Lauren. And the other thing is that it's also teaching children and teaching ourselves that our body has all the answers to that our body is constantly communicating to us through our emotions, whether we're in alignment or out of alignment. And when you have tools and techniques in your little toolkit, to know, oh, I am feeling out of alignment. I'm feeling this hustle and pushing and rushing, you know, that you have these techniques that you can just pull in during your day, during challenging times to completely shift your energy back into alignment. You're empowered and then able to move forward with it. So absolutely. And it's practice too, because I can tell you that, you know, this stuff, it really works. And it takes practice. You know, we don't go to the gym and do arms one day and all of a sudden we're buff. You know, we have to work at it every single day. And I think that, and I'm sure you would agree with me that we need to be patient on our journey too, because sometimes we can look back and go, oh, I really allowed myself to get really mad at that. Did I fully process that emotion? (laughs) Well, maybe not. But the next time you'll be a little bit more aware of it, you know, and as you become more and more aware, those opportunities to transform, they become shorter and shorter and shorter because you're not taking the time to go, oh, I realize I didn't do it then. You're realizing that you're almost catching it in the moment that it's happening. But would you agree it's it's practice? Yeah, absolutely. But it's also practicing without... um, having a specific outcome in mind because if we think oh I'll do these techniques because I want to feel this this and this you're really defeating the purpose you do the techniques because they make you feel good and kids children are fantastic in in bringing that message home to us because all they want to do kids just want to feel good they want to feel happy and joyful all the time. And so when they're feeling yucky, they want to throw it off anyway. So if we can teach them techniques that actually, hey, let's, you know, process it, get rid of it, move on, and you're back to being happy again, you know, and playing with your your friends again. And this next technique that I'm going to um, introduce, and, and I think a few people in your audience will have aha moments with this, And that is that when you're feeling an emotion, when you're feeling those um, triggering emotions, 
that if you allow yourself to process that emotion and not attach the stories to it, like we were talking about before, not attach a story to that emotion, it takes less than 90 seconds for that emotion to be truly felt and transmuted and to be released from the body. 90 sec less than 90 seconds for it to be transmuted and released from the body. So this next technique, which is so, so easy to do, and I'll tell you a funny story. I'll tell you the story of my daughter when she was, oh, she was only about six or seven. <laughs> and she's just a classic. She, um, she says what she thinks. I love it. And um, she knows her own mind and she walks to the beat of her own drum, which I love. So she was feeling really angry. I can't think what it was, but she was feeling really angry about something. And she came into the kitchen while I was cooking and she said, Mommy, blah, 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 blah. And she's like, and I looked at her and I said, India, you, um, you look like you're really angry about something. Yes, Mommy, I'm really angry. And, blah, 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 blah. and I said, okay. I said, you know, because... I taught her this beforehand. I said, you know that it only takes 90 seconds for you to really feel an emotion. I said, do you want to, you know, process this and then feel good again? And she goes, yes, yes. It's not feeling good in my body, mummy. It's not feeling good. So I said to her, okay, I'm going to stay with you and you feel that emotion. You truly feel that anger in your body, all right? And when you're ready, you let me know and then we'll breathe together. And she goes, okay. So she stood there in front of me. She crossed her arms and she screwed up her face, feeling this anger. I had to stop myself from laughing. <laughs> she of course. This little seven-year-old with her face screwed up and she's like, oh. <laughs> and then next minute she goes, okay, I'm ready now. So we took three deep breaths together and then she skipped off and she was off playing on the trampoline and doing her thing. Like I said, kids shift their energy so quickly and her go-to to help shift her energy is the trampoline. She'll sometimes come out to me and go, oh, look at her and go, you look a little bit upset. Yes, I am upset. I'm going to jump on the trampoline, mum. She'll go and jump on the trampoline, come back out and she'll be all giggly and happy. And I go, this is where you need to acknowledge your children's emotions, good at, you know, the, the low ones and the high ones, she came in and she was all happy. And I said, wow, India. So you knew that you weren't feeling very good and you knew that the trampoline was something, a way of processing your emotions, movement, as in getting the emotions flowing. And I can see that your energy has changed. You, you I can feel your energy is so much happier. And I, yes, mummy, I'm so much happier. And she was just so excited about it. But getting back to that 90 seconds thing, is that once again, we're empowering our children to know that they're allowed to feel into what it is they're feeling into, that emotions aren't bad, they just need to feel into them, but not attaching the stories that go along with them, like you were saying, Lauren, before, that then create that emotion to stop, get blocked and be trapped. Allow the tears to flow. Tears are an amazing way to help to release energy. Um, and many times during um, emotional freedom technique where you're tapping on the body, many times uh, it brings me to tears. Tears of releasing emotion, but also tears of joy as well, tears of gratitude, um, which is really, really beautiful. So I think that, you know, I, I love that. I think the first technique for me, I probably connect with more because I know that it, it distracts my mind. Yeah. So, and I think that, that our listener at home, you know, obviously they'll decide which one sounds good to them. Obviously try both at home if you are interested, but you know, one of the things that I do, and I don't know if this will be helpful is I, I say, um, I'm not my mind. I'm not my mm -hmm. mind. And I try to be authoritative a little bit on that because, yeah. you know, the second one, when you were telling me about it and I thought, I, I want to be able to do that, but I know sometimes the story continues yeah. on and it's difficult to block that out while feeling the emotion. So have you been able to block out the story while you're feeling the emotion or do you yeah. prefer one over the other? I love them both. Yeah. I find that um, the second one is really good 
when it's a very, it's really intense and it's heightened and they might be a little bit agitated. So going through that process of um, the first technique where it's, uh, you know, getting connected, they might not be able to even get connected within their body to start with. So the second one might be when it's more heightened and the first one might be more where, um, you know, they're just sort of feeling more the sadness and not as um, accelerated in the, the emotion. But it's a matter of parents just giving it a go and seeing which one works for them. And the other thing that I was going to say is when you're introducing these techniques, introduce them to your children when they are in a calm space, first and foremost. You don't, you don't want to introduce it to them when they're in that heightened emotional state because they're like, what's mum doing at the moment? You know, they have no clue. So it's really important in, um, in a really nice calm space. So when you're sitting outside in the sun and, you know, you're just chatting together and just introduce, say, you know what, this has really worked for me. Have a go. And you do it and they feel fantastic. And what you want them to do is connect in with how they feel before you do the technique and how they feel afterwards. And so that they have a comparison and then like, yeah, I feel so calm and I feel so, or I feel so energized or I feel so whatever, you know? And so getting them to connect in with the difference it makes them feel, getting once again into those feelings and getting connected within their body, what feels good to them. Because this is how, this is the first stage of getting them connected back into their body, which is where their self-esteem and confidence lives, where their worthiness lives. And that's the key thing because looking at externally in, into their external world and comparing themselves to what's going on externally will create more um, frustration and overwhelm <clears throat> and helps to deplete their nervous system, helps to deplete their immune system and helps to deplete their feelings of worthiness. It's when you get in touch with what's going on within and then igniting their passions, what's important to them. Remember I, talk, I talked to you about my son who was bullied when he was seven years old? Yeah. Well, he was actually, he's now 16 and he's number three in Australia in downhill um, mountain biking. Mount, he found that mountain biking was his passion and um, my goodness it's just amazing he's gone overseas traveling with his mountain biking and um, he says to me I, you know I say to him what is your ultimate goal with mountain biking do you know and he's like I will be world champion and that is his desire it actually brings tears to my eyes because it's not an ego driven thing it's mm -hmm. not he wants to be world champion for the accolades he's very humble it's I want to be world champion because that is my destiny mm. because that is my passion my drive and when he gets on that track he's not comparing himself to others in fact he cheers on his mates who are competitors he cheers them on but it's like I'm riding my race and this is for me ultimately at the mm. end of the day Mm -hmm. and how I can improve me yeah yeah so I guess you know when you learn to process your emotions you're not storing them inside you're not identifying with your story you're you know you're obvious like you're not really giving time to allow your your ego to grow which is you know it's kind of it's whole other episode if we were ever to talk about that yeah. but you know and in the end you can come out and be a little bit more of a kind humble you know, person who is more able to go with the flow and allow things to just be as they are. I know you have a free ebook that's available, Seven Secrets to Raising Happy, Confident, Self-Assured Children. So I'll put a link to that in the show notes for our listener at home. Is there anything, Pauline, that I didn't ask you that you wanted to mention? We are just over the hour now. So I just... um wanted to wrap up the show, but you've given us a I, lot I of really concrete been, things. Uh, yeah, this has yeah. been so fun, Lauren. Um, I've really enjoyed my time with you. It's Me been too. great. And I love, I love questions. I love people asking me questions and, you know, diving deeper and, um, yeah, I guess with your audience, if they have any questions, I have, um, a free 30 minute chat that I have with my clients because I think it's important that they understand 
what I do, where I'm coming from and make sure that we are a good connection before I work with anyone, both ways that they feel connected with me and I feel connected with them and that I can provide what they're asking for. So um, yeah, I've always got that on offer for people. That's great. And I'll put the show notes or in the show notes, I'll put um, all Pauline's contacts, you at home and you do do online work. That's right. For our yes, listeners who are based in Australia. Fabulous. Yes. Fabulous. Yes. Um, yeah. I'll also put a couple of uh, resources in the show notes as well. Cause when we were talking, it made me think of a book I recently read called the untethered soul. Have you read that? No, I haven't. Sounds like a really good, it's I love the fabulous. Title. It's a fabulous book. Mm-hmm. It talks a lot about, you know, letting go. One of the quotes from that book is, you know, let go and give room for the pain to pass through you. It's just energy. Just see it as energy and let it go. And, you know, I love what you were talking about, how when you can associate yeah. a quote like that with color, which it makes it yes. even more vivid and, and really allows it to be a little bit easier to focus on. Oh, the vi- visualizations are incredibly, yeah. incredibly powerful. And that's something that I work with the children, but also with the mums. Visualization yeah. um, audio that I also give is really, really powerful for them in, in, in getting in touch with what their desires are, like their future self, being mm-hmm. able to envisage their future self and, and calling in by lifting their energy up, calling in that future self to that present day, which is really, really beautiful. But I also have an ebook that I'm just, another ebook that I'm um, almost finished that I'll give you the link to that you can put in the show notes once I've finished for Great. mums. And that will give them more of an idea of what I do working with mums. That sounds fabulous. Well, thank you so much, Pauline, for all your time Absolute today pleasure. and your um, <laughs> all your, your generous gifts of knowledge. So I know that you've definitely helped a lot of people and I can't wait to try out those techniques myself. Beautiful. Thank you, Laura. It's been thank wonderful, you. wonderful. Hey, thanks so much for listening. If you enjoyed the episode, please do leave us a review where you listen to your podcast and share it with your friends. New episodes every Monday.